हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स कैसे हैं आप लोग मेरा नाम शीतल ठाकुर है एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माय चैनल सो इन टू डेज लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू कवर चैप्टर नंबर थ्री ऑफ दिस बुक विच इज प्रिंसिपल्स एंड प्रैक्टिस ऑफ सिल्विक कल्चर रिटन बाय एलिस खन्ना सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बुक विच एवरी फॉरेस्ट्री स्टूडेंट शुड नो एज वेल एज द स्टूडेंट हु वॉन्ट्स टू सेलेक्ट फॉरेस्ट्री एज द ऑप्शनल सब्जेक्ट फॉर द वेरियस कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जामिनेशन दे ऑल मस्ट हैव आइडिया अबाउट दिस बुक बिकॉज दिस बुक प्रोवाइड्स द बेसिक नॉलेज ऑफ द फॉरेस्ट्री एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्टडी फॉरेस्ट्री एंड नो द concepts of the forestry then this is a very must book you must have idea about so in today's lecture i am going to cover chapter number 3 that is factors of the locality so in my previous lectures i have already told the classification of the factors of the locality into four broad categories that is climatic factors topographic factors edaphic factors and biotic factors currently we are studying the climatic factors okay so in my previous lecture i have covered the solar radiation in which we have uh, studied about the light heat and temperature okay so in today's lecture i am going to cover moisture the importance of the moisture the sources of the moisture that is precipitation where we have the rain under which we will be studying the monsoon and the rainfall pattern in india okay so this is a very broad and very important topic in this uh, in this chapter so i will be covering this uh, topic in details so in today's lecture i am going to cover up to here only rest that is the characteristics of india's rainfall and its influence on the vegetation snow hail uh, dew and hoar frost invisible condensation of the moisture wind harmful and beneficial effects of the wind and bioclimate i will be covering in the next video okay so let's start our lecture okay so first of all we have the importance of the moisture okay so moisture we relate with the water okay so and we all know that water is very important for all the living beings okay so water is important for the human beings as well as it is equally important for all the vegetation and here we are going to study the importance of the moisture of water for the vegetation okay so it can be studied under first of all the importance in the physiological activities okay so physiological activities are all the physiological processes that is the photosynthesis respiration transpiration etc which takes place inside the plant body okay they are known as the physiological processes uh in the plants okay so how water is important for that as the water forms about 90 to 95% constituent part of the cell wall and 80% part of the protoplasma which is the physical basic of the life okay so uh, suppose this is a cell and cell plants contain a wall outside the cell okay so this wall is known as the cell wall and inside the cell uh, there is a nucleus and cytoplasma cytoplasma is the fluid uh, present inside the cell okay so so this nucleus and the cytoplasm is known as the protoplasm and here you can see that 90 to 95% part of the cell wall is consist of the water and 80% part of the protoplasma is consist consist of the water and therefore we can say that the cell which is the basic of the life is consist of 90% of the water okay so next we have the water occurs in the cell vacuoles as a cell sap and on it depends the turgidity of the cell which in turn governs the plant growth okay so turgidity is the process of, uh, of uh, suppose this is a cell and the water molecules presents inside the cell they exert a pressure on the cell wall okay so when these water molecules exert pressure on the cell wall the cell will try to maintain its shape okay so this process by which the cell maintains its shape is known as turgidity okay so water plays a very important role in the process of the turgidity by which plant uh, plant maintains uh, sorry by which the cell maintains its shape as a result it governs the plant growth okay so Uh, next is it is the only medium for the absorption of the soil minerals and gases in the plants okay so this is a plant suppose this is a plant and plant uh, and nutrients present inside the soil they needs to be absorbed by this plants okay so water act as a medium by which these nutrients present inside the soil they reach to the root hairs and by which they get absorbed inside the plant Uh, plant okay that's how the plant uh, so that's how the moisture is important for the absorption of the soil minerals and gases in the plants okay it is one of the raw material required for the photosynthesis okay so so photosynthesis is a process by which plant makes their food in the presence of the water and light okay so water acts as a raw material for the process of photosynthesis 
uh, it is required for the translocation of the manufactured food as well as for all the chemical reaction taking place inside the plant body okay so suppose the plant is making its food suppose the process of photosynthesis is taking place in this leaf okay so the food is produced in this leaf okay so to translocate this food produced in the leaf the water is required for that translocation and all the chemical reaction taking place inside the plant body the water is required for that too and it is essential for the respiration which cannot take place in its absence okay so respiration is a process by which the plant converts uh, the sugar or the carbohydrates produced during the process of photosynthesis into energy okay so uh, water is a very important component required during this process of respiration and it is necessary for the transpiration which prevents the excess of the heating of the plant okay so transpiration is a process by which the plant loses its water molecules to the atmosphere when the temperature rises the this plant will lose its water molecule to the atmosphere this plant will uh, lose its water molecules to the atmosphere when the temperature rises okay so this process is known as transpiration okay and this process prevent the excess of the heating in the plant next is it is essential for the germination and the viability of the seed okay so seed requires the particular amount of moisture for its germination and viability is the potential of the seed to germinate it is also dependent on the water okay so as the seeds which contain higher amount of the water their viability will be lesser as compared to the seeds which contains low amount of the water okay so this we will be studying in details when we will be studying about the seeds okay so next is the importance in the soil formation process importance of the moisture in the soil formation process okay so water is in, uh, required for the physical and the chemical withering okay so withering is the phenomena of the breakdown of the parent materials or the rock into the soil and it can be physical when the physical forces are involved and chemical when the chemical reaction is taking place to convert that parent material into the soil and this we are going to study in details when we will be studying the edaphic factors okay so which are the most important soil forming process and it is required for the translocation of the product of the withering and thus it is an important factor of the soil formation therefore water is required for the soil formation and it is very important for the soil formation process next is the influence on the vegetation okay so how water influence the vegetation okay so because of the great importance of the moisture in the vital process of the plant life as well as on the soil formation water exerts a profound influence on the vegetation it determines the nature of the vegetation that would survive in a particular area okay so in other words it determines the species that would grow their number per unit area height diameter volume growth of the trees and other vegetation it is therefore used as a basic of the classifying vegetation into broad temperature temperature zones okay so this classification we will be studying in the upcoming lectures because the water has influence on the plant life and the soil formation processes therefore it has the great influence on the distribution of the vegetation okay so next is the what are the sources of moisture okay so from where we can obtain the moisture okay so first of all we have the precipitation okay so precipitation we can obtain in the form of the rain snow or hail okay and next is the dew and hoar frost and last we have the invisible condensation of the moisture okay so all this we are going to study in detail okay so first of all let's talk about precipitation in the form of first of all rain okay so how does rainfall occur so from this image you can clearly see that here when uh, uh, this is the water present in the presence of the sunlight this water will get evaporated in the form of water vapors okay so these water vapors will be stored in inside this cloud okay so when 
these water vapors will condense inside this cloud the weight of the cloud will get heavier due to presence of the water vapors present inside this cloud and as a result the precipitation will occur in the form of rainfall that's how the rainfall occurs so rain is the precipitation of the drops of the water formed as a result of the condensation of water vapor in the upper air okay so in india the rainfall occurs under the influence of advancing southwest monsoon retreating northeast monsoon then we have the cyclonic depressions then we have the westerly depressions and then we have the nor'westers and other thunderstorms okay so in this lecture we will be going to study about all these in details okay so first we have the advancing southwest monsoon okay so isme hota kya hai at the end of may month due to increase in temperature there is a low pressure developed at the north region okay so in india we have summers during the month of may and at this time due to increase in temperature the a, the pressure will be decreased at the north part of the india okay here there will be low pressure and at the same time at the southeast zones of the madagascar anti cyclone will develop okay so the air produced during this cyclone will try to move towards the low pressure zones okay so when this air uh, of this monsoon will move towards the india it will convert it into two parts that is the uh, arabian sea current and bay of bengal okay so here is the arabian sea and here is the bay of bengal okay so this monsoon will convert it into two currents that is the arabian sea current and the bay of bengal current okay so this arabian sea current it is further divided into two branches one is here and second one is here okay so one of the branch of this arabian sea current burst on the kerala coast at the beginning of the june okay so here is somewhere kerala located actually i'm drawing this with my mouse that's why my drawing is not proper and moreover i don't have the exact idea about the location because i'm not a geography student okay so i'm drawing this location with my general idea okay so here is kerala somewhere located and and arabian sea current burst on the kerala coast at the month of june and moreover here is somewhere the western ghats located and these ghats obstruct the path of these winds coming from this uh, this arabian sea current okay so as a result there is a heavy rainfall in this region and the coastal region of these western ghats and very less rainfall in this region which is opposite to the western ghat okay so after crossing the western ghats these winds crosses the deccan plateau and madhya pradesh and they meet here with the way of bengal current and the other branch of this arabian sea pass uh, arabian sea current passes from the saurashtra and kutch and it crosses the rajasthan and then at the end it reaches to the it reaches the kumau hills situated at the uttarakhand and uttar pradesh okay so now let's talk about the bay of bengal current okay so one of the branch of this bay of bengal current enters enters from here towards the northeast india okay and but this uh, these uh, these currents they are obstructed by khasi hills present in this zone okay so these are the khasi hills ranges present here they obstruct the path of this uh, bay of bengal current as a result there is a heavier rainfall on the windward side okay uh, on this side while there is a very less rainfall on the opposite side of these khasi hills as a result the chirapunji place which is located on the windward side of khasi hills it receives about 12000 mm of the rainfall while the shillong which is just 40 km away from the chirapunji receives only 2150 mm of the rainfall rainfall okay so the difference between the chirapunji and shillong is just 40 km and there is a lot of difference in the rainfall intensity it is due to the presence of these khasi hill ranges which obstruct the path of bay of bengal current while the other branch of this bay of bengal current it get uh, it is diverted towards the west by the himalayan ranges present here okay so these winds when they reach the himalayas then these himalayan himalayan ranges they divert these ranges towards the west as a result the rainfall intensity keeps on decreasing when we when we move towards the west from sikkim uh, from sikkim to the kashmir 
Okay, so thus most of the country except Tamil Nadu and Kashmir receives about 80% of their rainfall during the June to September under the influence of advancing southwest monsoon while Tamil Nadu and Kashmir receives less than half of their rainfall during this monsoon. Okay, so next is the retreating northeast monsoon. Okay, so what happened after the southwest monsoon? But by the end of the September, temperature decreases in this north zone. As a result, the low pressure zones, they get shifted towards the south. Okay, Due to shift of these low pressure zones, the monsoon also gets shifted towards the south. Okay, So, this uh, retreating of the southwest monsoon, it starts from the Himachal Pradesh and Punjab it, and it gradually moves towards the Bengal. As a result, the direction of this uh, retreating monsoon is the northeast direction okay so after reaching the bengal from the bengal these uh, currents it moves towards the south direction as a result the coastal zones of this tamil nadu regions they get maximum of its rainfall during the retreating of this monsoon during the month of the October to December. Okay, so in the coastal areas, it is heavy rainfall while the inland areas, they receive very negligible rain. Okay, and here from this table, you can see the date of the arrival of the monsoon in the various zones and the date of the retreating of the southwest monsoon uh, on the various dates. Okay, so next one is the cyclonic depressions. Okay, cyclonic depressions, they originate in the way of Bengal and Arabian Sea. Okay, so in the way of Bengal, occasionally severe cyclonic storms develop during the October and November and these results in the torrential rain, stormy winds and the high storm sea waves in the coastal areas of the Orissa and West Bengal. On an average, 3 to 5 cyclonic storms visit eastern coast every year, while in the Arabian Sea, these cyclones originate in the west of the Ceylon, which is nowadays known as Sri Lanka, and bring rainfall to the west coast and the neighboring parts of the plateau, the Deccan, and even the Gujarat. On an average, three cyclonic storms visits the west coast during October to December every year. Okay, so next one is the westerly depressions. Okay, so from December onwards, the North India comes under the influence of these westerly depressions or the western dip disturbances which ori originate in the Mediterranean regions and they enter from the Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan and, and enter in India during the month of the December, January and February at the rate of the one depression per week. And it causes the rainfall not only in the northwest zone of the India, but also in the north and the eastern parts of the, sorry, north northeastern parts of the India. In the higher hills, it causes the snowfalls and it is under the influence of these temperate depressions that the Kashmir Valley and the mountains of the Great Himalayan Ranges where the southwest monsoon could not reach receives the snowfall and the rainfall respectively. The winter the winter rain decreases from the sub-mountain areas of the Himalaya southwards and from the Punjab to Bihar east, eastwards. And it increases in the West Bengal and Assam due to addition of the moisture-wearing winds from the northern way of Bengal. Okay, so in this region that is the Bengal and the Assam. The rainfall increases due to these westerly depressions uh, due to the addition of the moisture uh, from this uh, northern part of the way of Bengal in the westerly depressions and it causes the heavy, heavy rainfall in the Assam and uh, West Bengal. Okay, so the last under the rainfall of India is the Northwesters and other thunderstorms. Okay, so uh, with the rise of the temperature during April and May causes the violent thunderstorms with the strong winds in the eastern India, that is the Assam, West Bengal and Orissa. Okay, so what happens during the month of April and May due to rise in the temperature, these air dry air masses, they move towards the low pressure zone which is created here in the east and these uh, dry air masses they they meet with the moist air masses which moves from the way of bengal as a result it causes the thunderstorms in this low pressure zones okay so as these winds move in the northwesterly direction and they are popularly known as the nor'wester zone okay so these storms they are short lived but they causes the considerable damage to the crop and property these storms they are often campaigned, campaigned by the rain and hail okay so these uh, storms they are popularly known as the kalbisakhi in this bengal region
Okay, so in the Deccan Plateau, similar kind of thunderstorms brings the rain. They are called as the mango showers. And in the northwest India, storms brings the rain as well as the hail. But in the Rajasthan, only dust storm, storms occur due to uh, these winds. And sometimes these dust and dust storms they move uh, towards the north and the east, affecting Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, and Uttar Pradesh. Next is the characteristics of India's rainfall and its influence on the vegetation. Okay, so this I will be covering in my next, next video because this lecture is getting too long. Okay, so I will be covering this in my next video. So stay tuned for the upcoming parts of this chapter. And uh, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you in the next lecture.